if you watch part three of the elephant build, you'll know that I'm in the midst of painting figures. It's a lot of background noise because I have fans running. The uh, outside temperature is around 114 degrees, so got some fans running in the house, trying to stay cool. Well, working on the figures again, and it's time to paint the faces. I don't know about you, but this is always the most difficult part as far as I'm concerned. Three or four coats before it's opaque enough to move on to the next step. But I'm taking some burnt red and I have it extremely thin. And I'm putting it into the eye sockets tracing it down the side of the nose to the mouth and the paint is very thin So I'm trying to highlight those facial features, the eye socket, the nose, the mouth. All right, so I think I have that burnt red about as far as I want to take it. I've already done the work on the hat and the headphones. So now I'm going to try to get in here. I'm just going to paint the eye flesh color. All right. Time to start getting rid of some of that red. And I have the base flesh color. All right, well, I have the hair done. These guys are blonde. And I don't know if you can see it. Got some eyebrows on him. And let's figure put brown hair on him. Put a little bit of highlights on it to give it a little 3D. So put some eyebrows on him. All right, I'm going to take some basic skin tone and put a few highlights on the figures, on the faces. All right, so now I'm going to try and put some highlights on his face. I'm going to keep this paint really thin. And build this up slowly.
Well, I'm getting close to finishing these up. And what I'm going to do now is put the beard on the figures. And that'll finish the face. I still have to paint the little microphone. But I'll do that after this. And again, I have the I have the paint just very, very thin. All right, well, I'm calling it good for the heads. And that's about as far as my figure painting skills are gonna take me. All right, time to try to install these heads on the torsos. I'm wearing these gloves, thinking that maybe that'll help keep from damaging the paint. Doesn't look too bad. Okay, so what I'm going to do, make sure my fingers are clean, take some CA. about right. All right, figures for the elephant are painted. You notice the boots aren't painted, but you won't see them. So I just didn't bother spending time on it. And here's the commander figure. And overall, I'm satisfied with how it turned out. Not a great figure painter. But, you know, I, I do give it my best effort. And... Here I got my NCO.
and I'm satisfied with how this figure turned out as well. I think it's an interesting uniform combination. But I did see some illustrations online using this combination, and so that's what I went by when painting this figure. So that's done, and that's a relief because I don't really enjoy painting figures. So getting that done is, it's like a huge weight being lifted. All right, back to the elephant and get some camo on it. I'm going to try to duplicate this paint scheme. Now, <laughs> I'm not gonna be able to do it exactly but I'm going to use this paint scheme as a guide and try to put this scheme on my elephant. And you can see it's, it's an Italian paint scheme. For the camouflage, I'm going to use MIG Olive Groon Option 2, which is MIG 0002. This is going to be the only camo color. I'm not going to put any brown on it. It's just going to be Dunkelgelb and Olive Green. I'm using a, a 2 slash 0 brush. Now this brush, the tip has rounded off just a little bit. But otherwise, the brush is in pretty good condition. And it'll be fine for this. And I'm going to thin my paint with water. I want to thin it with water because if I use some sort of thinner like X20 or lacquer thinner or something like that, I run the risk of pulling up my Dunkelgel base coat. All right, time to get started. And I have to try not to get too uptight about this because you know, we all want our models to be perfect. But I know this is not going to be perfect. So I'm going to mix in some water. To make this thin. Alright, so I got this section of the casemate done. And you can see the patterns resemble the patterns up here. The patterns on the casemate resemble the patterns on the drawing. Uh, one thing, the drawing and the model is not exactly the same. The, they're a little bit different. So I just improvised and made it as good as I can make it. And to me, it's mostly important just to get the feeling of the drawing, I'm not going to be able to duplicate it exactly, and, and I'm not even worried about that. But I like to use the drawing as a go-by, and I try to duplicate it as best I can. I have the pattern put on the elephant, and you can see that I've tried to copy what Dragon gave me, and that's not an exact copy, but I use it as a go-by, and I try to get it as close as reasonably possible by using their paint scheme, and I don't have to make one up for myself. And here's the front. And here's the rear. Now, I did deviate in a few spots because of trying to make it easier to paint. But generally, I try to duplicate these three views. Now, the right side, I had to make that up myself because there is no right side view. And the same with the top. There's no top view, so I have to make that up. 
I'll be using the same MIG Olive Groom Option 2 that I used to put the pattern down with. I do not need a lot of paint. So a little bit of paint goes a long way with the Badger Sotar. Alright, here we go. And you know, when I was first getting going, give me a little more light. First getting going on the hobby, when I would do camouflage, you know, I get all uptight about it. I figure, oh, if I'm if I don't do it exactly right, my model's ruined, all that. The fact is, if you don't like it, you can just repaint the model. I mean, it's not that big a deal. So, I don't really feel too much pressure going in here and painting. Now I find that if I get the airbrush pretty close to the surface, my results are a little more precise. Of course, at the same time, you run the risk of some paint buildup, so you got to be pretty, pretty light on the trigger. I don't have the I don't have the best camera set up. I'm trying to give you a view. But I gotta see what I'm doing at the same time. You know, when I was copying the paint scheme from the Dragon Instructions, I tried to get it remotely close. I mean, I, I did try to duplicate it. But there are some instances when I deviated a little bit from the pattern in order to make it easier to paint. For instance, you know, the pattern may be near some 
tools or clamps or something like that and I may have moved the pattern away from that just simply because it's too difficult to spray around those things. For instance up in here Now the tracks, you know, I just paint right over the tracks because we'll paint those later. Well, the camouflage is painted and that went pretty well. I'm going to do a combination of foam chipping and brush chipping. I'll start out with the foam and any chips that are too large I can correct with the brush or if I get the color of the chips in the wrong place I can also correct those with the brush and there will probably be instances well, I'll have to brush chip depending on the location. Well, I'm going to start with this MiG-44-0044 chipping. And you can use any dark brown paint. It doesn't have to be this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this chipping paint on the dunkel gel. Now I'm going to get some in the green and I'll have to fix that with the brush. I will not use it on the Zimmerit. The Zimmerit will have to use this because it's a like a cement paste. It's not going to have rust underneath it. Alright, so here we go. And I don't worry about making mistakes. If I, if I have some chips I don't like, well, I can fix them. So I don't, I don't worry about it too much. And same with the chips on these welds. If I get chips in the welds, I want to touch those up because the welds aren't going to rust like the, the steel plate. My elephant shouldn't be beat up too much because after the Ferdinands were retrofitted into elephants, there wouldn't have been a lot of time between then and when it was sent to Italy. So it shouldn't be like dilapidated. But as modelers, well, you know, we want a little bit of a little bit of a dramatic look, so we always end up overweathering, but personally I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. And of course the edges would be the most likely to chip, especially the edges where there would be handling or foot traffic or things like that. Okay, I'm liking that. So I'm going to go ahead and move on and do the rest of the model. I have the brown sponge chipping done. Okay, see on the roof of the casemate. 
engine deck. And here on the sides of the casemate. Edges of the fender. The rear sprocket. Some around the rear hatch. And here another, another view of the top. And on the side. Trying to adjust the model so that there's no glare. Alright, so I'm going to start chipping the green camouflage. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use the Dunkelgel base, the MiG-902. It's what I use to paint the base color with. And I'm going to mix in just a little bit of olive green so it, it doesn't stand out too much. The chips don't stand out too much where it doesn't look like I'm painting an ambush scheme. I'm going to put a little bit more paint in this time. So I'm going to want to paint the the whole model. Whereas before with the dark chip color, I could just add a little bit as I went since it was just a solid color. All right. So I got just a little bit of green in there. I don't know if you can see that the color is just just a touch different. I'm going to add a drop of retarder. Try to keep it from drying up. And I'm going to add just a little bit of water. That retarder is awfully thick. All right. A sponge. And I'm working on the edges. That's where the paint would rub off. And I'm putting the chips about the same density as the chips surrounding it. The sponge chipping of the green camo is done. Now it's very subtle. You kind of see it on the edges. And the glare is not, doesn't help show it off. A little bit on the engine deck. The edge of the fenders. Say so it's subtle. So with that being done, the next thing is we'll start sponge chipping the Zimmerit. Well, I have the chipping done on the elephant. You can see that the chipping is pretty subtle. 
You can see where I've done the Zimmerit chipping. There's not a lot of that. There's some. I tried to make it look like, you know, the paint had rubbed off the Zimmerit from friction. I also painted the weld seams. That's something I don't usually do, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna try it this time. I put a dark wash in there and I'll see how that turns out. I have the pistol port plugs painted in primer red. Painted the hammer. The handle has a base coat of wood. That'll get some more work after a clear coat. And I have the base color of the hammer head. And that'll get some more work as well. Some chipping back here, some Zimmerit chipping, some paint chipping. I painted the spare tracks a dark gray. And this dark gray will take will take some rust washes really well. And I may do some reverse chipping on these tracks where I put some black back onto the tracks. So <laughs> instead of making it look like the parts had the paint chipped off, I'll do some chipping to put the paint back on. On this side, the chipping is pretty subtle. Same with the Zimmerit chipping. It's there, but you have to kind of look for it. The roof of the elephant has been chipped. The cupola ring has been chipped. Engine deck has been chipped. Spare tracks in the front have a base coat of color. Well, now with the camouflage and chipping done, and a few of the pieces painted, such as the tracks and other parts. The model is now ready for a clear coat. Uh, initially, I was going to put numbers on the side of the casemate. I have decided not to do that. I don't think the Italian elephants had numbers, and so I've decided not to do it. So the next thing for the model will be to get a clear coat on it, and then start the weathering process. So I'm going to end this video here. It's gotten a little bit long. And I hope you come back and join me for part five. And we'll start weathering the elephant.